I've been sailing around the world and I passed through the Hormuz Strait a couple of times as captain commanding one of the largest LNG ships in the world. I've crashed my drone during its first flight because of the GPS spoofing near the Hormuz Strait. In this video, we'll discuss about the importance of Hormuz Strait, why all the world is talking about it and scared if it will be closed, why the GPS jamming and spoofing is happening right now in the region and how the ships are dealing with this situation. Hi friends, if you are new here, my name is Mustafa, I'm a ship's captain and in this channel we talk about life at sea, my type shipping in general and LNG as cargo in particular. The Hormuz Strait is just 21 miles wide but it holds the world's economy in its grip where oil, geopolitics and danger collide and right now it's once again at the center of global tension. Before we dive into why the strait is so important, let's find out where on earth it is. This is the Arabian Peninsula. On one side, the Arabian Sea is connected to the Mediterranean by the Red Sea. On the other side of the peninsula, the Arabian Sea runs into the Gulf of Oman, which is connected to the Arabian Gulf or the Persian Gulf. Between these gulfs is this narrow stretch of water, the Strait of Hormuz. The strait is bounded on either side by the countries of Iran, Oman and the United Arab Emirates. The ships use the strait like the highway for cars. One lane for ships entering the Persian Gulf and parallel lane for ships exiting the Gulf. About a fifth of the world's total consumption pass through the strait. So it's not affecting the countries in the Arabian Gulf only, but the whole world. Over the past three years, an estimated of 20 million barrels of crude oil have passed through it daily. Saudi Arabia, Iran, UAE, Kuwait and Iraq export most of their crude through the strait mainly to Asia. Let's calculate it by liter, which is a familiar unit for you. One barrel is 159 liter. 20 million barrels equal to more than 3 billion liters of oil which pass daily through the strait. Not in a month, not in a week, daily. In addition to oil, 20% of global LNG, liquefied natural gas, is produced in the Arabian Gulf by Qatar and UAE and sent all of it through the strait. Now we know just how important the Strait of Hormuz is to global oil trade. We can imagine just how damaging any disruption to the flow through the strait would be to countries reliant on receiving the oil and on those countries reliant on the income from selling oil or LNG. This is not the first time the tension spikes in the region. The fight to control this waterway is as old as sailing itself. Back in the 16th century, it was the Portuguese and Ottoman empires battling for control of these valuable trade routes. But in the modern age, the conflict has really been about one thing, oil. The most notorious chapter in the Strait's recent history was the tanker war of the 1980s. Iraq, trying to damage Iran's economy, started attacking oil tankers sailing to and from Iranian ports. So Iran fought back hitting ships that were friendly with Iraq. Hundreds of tankers were damaged, and yet, even when the fighting was at its worst, the strait was never completely closed, which just goes to show how essential it is. In 2012, Iran threatened to block the strait in retaliation for US and European sections. And this year, 2025, after the US strikes against the nuclear sites of Iran, the Iranian parliament voted for the closure of the strait. So how the Strait of Hormuz can be closed? Naval mines that could be led by submarines, anti-ship missiles, attack drones, fast attack boats, all these could turn the narrow shipping lanes into a no-go zone. For months now, ships moving through the Strait of Hormuz have been reporting major problems with their GPS. Since mid-June 2025, reports have come in that nearly a thousand ships a day are having their navigation systems either jammed or spoofed. So what's the difference between these two terms? Jamming is the simple brute force method. An attacker uses a powerful transmitter to broadcast noise on the same frequency as the GPS satellites. The real signals, which are incredibly weak by the time they reach Earth, are completely drowned out. The screens on the bridge might flash an alarm, position unavailable. And just like that, the ship is electronically blind. Spoofing is far more dangerous. It's not just noise. It's sophisticated lie. Instead of blocking the signal, the attacker broadcasts their own counterfeit GPS signals that look perfectly legitimate to the ship's receiver. These fake signals are often stronger than the real ones, so the ship's system lock onto them instead. If you liked the video so far, appreciate if you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified for upcoming videos. For ships, GPS isn't just a convenience. 
is the central nervous system of the entire operation. All the bridge equipment have a signal fed from the GPS. IGDIS for our electronic charts, gyro compass for our course direction, GMDSS for our radio communication, etc. I have seen my ship's position jams all over the map, showing my ship on land or moving in impossible zigzag patterns. Not only ships, phones as well. You can see here maps is indicating that I'm in Iran, but actually I'm hundreds of miles away. Anything has GPS is affected. I've crashed my drone during its first flight because of the GPS spoofing in this region near the Hormoz Strait. When you fly a drone, it tries to remain in the same position. But because it was receiving different signal at the same time, the drone thought that is in a moving vehicle or ship. So once it flew, it went suddenly to the right in order to remain in the previous position, causing it to crash into the bulkhead. So how the seafarers, captain, deck officers are dealing with this issue? We understand that no single system can be trusted completely. We prepare ourselves for this kind of situation by doing drills and simulating equipment failures. We use radar to take bearings or to measure the distance to a known point of land. We use a method called parallel indexing to measure our drift and to confirm if we are still on our charted route. We use the echo sounders to compare the water's depth to what's on the chart for our supposed location. If the GPS says we are in 200 meters of water, but the echo sounder reads 20, we know something is wrong. We are even reaching for tools that are immune to digital attacks. When the screens are frequently with dubbed, we look up at the sky. The celestial navigation, the ancient art of finding our position using the sun, moon, and stars, is making a serious comeback. Using an instrument called a sextant, the deck officer can measure the angle of a star above the horizon. With that measurements, a precise clock and a book of tables, we can calculate the ship's latitude and longitude, a process completely independent of any satellite. We are falling back on dead reckoning, which is calculating our position based on our last known location, the speed and the course. It's fundamental skill that helps us to maintain awareness of our surroundings when digital aids fail. Tech companies are also hardening the hardware. Many new ships use multi-constellation receivers. We don't just use America's GPS, we also track Russia's GLONASS, Europe's Galileo and China's Baidu systems. Spoofing one of these is hard enough. Spoofing all of them at once is exponentially more difficult. Some of the most advanced systems are now incorporating encrypted and authenticated signals. Europe's Galileo system, for example, is rolling out a service that provides a digital signature, allowing a receiver to verify that a signal is authentic and hasn't been faked. The oil passing to the Hormo Street is used to fuel the ships as well. If you are interested to see how the operation is done, how much it costs, you may check out this video here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.